Hello friends and welcome to my channel for another custom build. Today we're going to be making a custom Ghostbusters firehouse diorama to go with this Mezco 112 Collective Ghostbusters set. This is really just an incredible figure set and I think it's pretty slept on. I was late to the Mezco collecting game and so these had already come and gone by the time that I started collecting Mezco. But these are still pretty well available which tells me that not a lot of people pick them up. So I was really blown away when I got them. I've had them for a little while but I've never displayed them because I, I wanted to have something that felt like worthy of such an incredible set of figures. So I decided that a Ghostbusters Firehouse diorama was going to be the move. Uh, I know Diamond Select made one but you had to, you know, buy something like 20 figures to get all the pieces and it, you know, that that's crazy to me. So <laughs> uh, I just thought, you know what, let's make one. So hopefully we're going to do something that's pretty faithful to the actual building. Ultimately, I want to build an Ecto-1 to go with these. The plan is that this will be something that would actually also accommodate an Ecto-1 if I were to expand onto the diorama as we go. So I invite you all to come along with me as I build this. And, you know, these are usually kind of me making the stuff up as I go along. And hopefully we'll have something cool by the end of it. Okay, let's talk about the supplies we're going to be using here. First and foremost, the base of this thing is going to be this pink insulation foam. This is a small off cut, but I have it in larger sheets. You can get this at Home Depot. Lowe's, I believe, carries like a, a kind of a mint green colored version of it. But it's a one inch thick foam and you can get it in sheets of 24 inches by 24 inches. Great stuff. I learned about this from Al Figures uh, from his YouTube channel. So I learned the fundamentals of making dioramas. So if you've not checked out his channel, please do so. He's a, a fantastic diorama builder. I got these crown molding pieces from Home Depot as well. This is just like in the wood trim section. Uh, so we're going to be using some of that. And then these are wooden di craft discs that I got at Michael's Crafts. Uh, I guess Creatology is the brand. It's the first time I've seen this. <laughs> the building on the front says like eight hook and ladder. It's the name of the firehouse. It has these blue circles with these stars in the center. So I got these as well from the craft store. I'm going to use these stars, put them on here, and then paint them to be the correct color. And lastly, for the lettering itself, I found these at the craft store. I looked all over and they had some, but not what I was looking for. And then I saw these at the bottom of a shelf. They're made for like countertop signs. They're only six bucks at retail. Then it was marked down to a dollar. And when I got to the register, they were only 25 cents. Come up. Uh, so these are the basic tools we're going to be using as well as some paint, which I'll show later on. So next I'm going to get everything laid out onto the foam and take it from there. Okay, so this is something I've not done before. I actually plotted out everything on the foam itself with Sharpie. Now, uh, if you're trying this at home yourself, word to the wise, I didn't think about this ahead of time, but I'm pretty sure Sharpies are alcohol based and that alcohol is gonna eat through this foam a little bit. I went pretty lightly, so I didn't have too many issues, but there are a couple of spots where, you know, if you put too much of the pigment on or push too hard, it will kind of make a little indentation. You can see I kind of screwed up here. I started doing measurements, and then when I actually started putting everything on, I, I wasn't adhering to those measurements correctly, and so I was like, oh, snap, this is too short. So ignore this black Sharpie stuff in here, uh, as well as this line here. And then the doors are in the center here. I'm going to take my foam cutter, which I've never used before. It's basically a, a wire that heats up and you push it through the wire. So hopefully I don't screw it up, but I'm going to be cutting out this arc here. So this will be one separate piece. And then I'm going to recess that in a little bit because, you know, the, the foam is an inch thick. So that'll be pushed back into this outer arc a little bit to give it some depth. And then all of the brickwork and the doors and everything, I'm just gonna carve into the foam and then paint them all separately. Uh, yeah, so next up is the cutting and then I'm, I'm gonna do the scoring of the brickwork and stuff after I cut it because I don't wanna do all that work and then screw up the cut and be like all that work down the drain. So uh, that's gonna come after this. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this cut and then I'll check back in after. Okay, checking in here with some progress. A couple of things. The first problem I had was the foam cutter I have wasn't, it's not big enough to accommodate a piece like this. So I ended up cutting this by hand. As a result, when I tried to cut through the backside of this and push it through, it got all jagged and stuff. So I ended up having to put this piece of thin foam, it's like thin craft foam in here just to make it kind of flat and flush so it doesn't look all craggy and poorly done. 
and once it's all painted it should should blend in pretty well i have this back piece mounted to a thinner piece of foam here and then this is a separate piece that comes off via magnets so now that it's assembled the next step is going to be to do all of the brickwork okay so i need to make the emblem thing i don't know what it is but it's on a lot of old new york buildings above entryways and it's this kind of crest looking thing uh, it's got this sort of black convex shape in the middle and then it's got these kind of like flourish almost like scroll work kind of leaves wheat I don't know what they are but I found this at Home Depot and that's what I'm gonna make it out of so this is a cap from some coffee creamer and that was kind of the perfect shape and size so I don't need all of this obviously I think what I'm gonna do is take this piece and this piece and cut them and swap the side they're on so that they close in around it and then I may try to take a few other little pieces and, and add them once I get that in place I'm gonna glue all of this together and then spray paint it flat black this needs to be black and then this is gonna be gold so yeah I'm gonna open this up and get to it okay so I've got this glued on here and it needs more. I got the bulk of it on there. So what I'm gonna do is kind of round off these little cut points uh, and do a little flourishing off maybe here and then something across the bottom and then something across the top just to make it look a little bit more like the actual one. To sculpt the elements on there, I'm gonna be using this Aves Epoxy Sculpt. I've used this on the channel before. It's a two part compound mixture. Uh, you mix the two parts in equal amounts and then you get about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour of working time before it starts to really harden up on you. So I'm just gonna get in there with some of that and uh, I'll check back in when it's done. Okay, so quick progress update on this. At the general black wash down, I cut these little wooden dowel rods to make the hinges for the doors here. And then the emblem is all complete as far as the sculpting is concerned. And then that sits right up here like this. And then I did a lot of brickwork on the bottom piece too. So the street in front of the firehouse actually has like old brick underneath the concrete that's sort of been like eroded away. So I wanted to represent that. I'm gonna to touch up the black areas a little bit more, paint this guy, and then we'll be into the final stages of actually painting. I also need to figure out still this kind of like lattice stuff. I don't know, it's like a window color. So the color of this is kind of like a, like sort of a not quite cream, a little bit off white painted stone. So we're gonna be using the Deco Art Americana acrylic paint that I typically use. This is stuff I get from Michael's Crafts, it's under $2 a bottle. Nothing fancy about it, it's just, you know, good paint. So I'm gonna mix a color that I think is gonna match the overall look of that stone. Now, once we do that, certain bricks are like different colors, so we're gonna go in and do that. Um, if you're painting a surface this big, I really recommend that you use a lot of paint to mix to begin with, because what happens is if you end up not making enough of it when it dries out then you don't have any more and you got to try to match it again and that's really difficult to do so even this may not be enough but um, this is a good place to start so that's actually working pretty well i was worried it was going to be a little too light but because we've got the black underneath uh, i can allow that to show through a bit and it's going to give us the look we want the idea is that i'm going to paint all of the kind of cream colored parts and then I'm going to do the sort of dark brownish black of the doorway. And then I'll do the concrete down below for this part. And that way I can just kind of let this white paint go wherever it needs to. And then I, you know, we'll touch up the fine tuning of the details later. 
But you see how up here, as I get toward the underside of this kind of crown molding trim piece here, the paint's getting a little thinner and that's actually good because this is gonna cast a natural shadow in the real world counterpart of this. And so in order to kind of approximate that a little bit more, we can let that paint get a little more thin and then that way it just kind of gives it more of a dirty look. You know, it's nice when you can let the paint kind of approximate the real life effects of weathering just by the virtue of not adding too much paint. Yeah, I want to take a moment to talk about dry brushing. If you have watched my channel before, you know about this most likely. But for those who are new, I want to show this technique a little bit. So what we're doing is using the brush without a ton of paint on it. And you just kind of lightly go over the raised areas and you let the recessed areas maintain their, their dark paint that's in there already. You can see that just really gives it like a kind of weathered look. When things are weathered like that, they're just more believable. They look more realistic. You know, if we just slapped solid paint on this thing, it wouldn't have any character to it. So by dry brushing, we're, we're giving it character because we're letting some of that underpainting show through because it's a cool technique and it's really easy to do. You literally just kind of swipe it like this without putting all the pressure on it. Okay, so a couple coats of paint are on there. And now what I'm gonna do is mix a little bit of brown into what is left here. And I'm gonna get it wet a little bit. So this is gonna be a little bit more of what we call a wash. You can see the contrast there between the two. So I'm gonna take this wash and I'm going to do a few of the bricks in this darker color. A little more water there. So that is gonna add a little more character to it, some variance in the bricks. And so we're gonna do that in a few places. The actual building has these kind of brick accents on it. So we're gonna be mimicking that. And to do that, we're gonna use a few different shades. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of gray in there as well. And it only takes a tiny little dab. You can see how much character this is starting to build already. So it takes it from being a, a you know kind of flat thing to having a lot more dimension to it. Okay, so now that the brick weathering process is done, we're gonna do the concrete next. So these front pieces here are gonna get painted in a very similar fashion to this, just with a more of a gray color. And then I'm also gonna do the sidewalk and driveway area. And then once those are done, we'll come in with the details in this part. Okay, so we've got the bulk of the painting done now. Um, the sidewalk, man, I, I just, I hate doing concrete <laughs> this, with this stuff. Like it just, it's really hard to get the color right. It's easy to make it look too streaky. So I actually, I think I need to go back in and like eliminate some of these kind of streak patterns by just doing some, maybe some stippling like taking this brush and just kind of doing this with it. I've got these painted black, so those are gonna turn yellow next, uh, along with this piece here. And then uh, I'll clean this up by painting the sort of, it's kind of a brown black color. I'm happy with how this is turning out. It uh, is definitely the biggest diorama I've made and it's been a little bit tedious, but it's, it's coming along, so we're gonna keep on trucking. So for the windows here, I was trying a couple of different things. One, at one point I was going to do a thing where I just used like clear action figure plastic with some tracing paper under it, as you see here. And then I was just gonna try using tape across the plastic to give the look of the window frames, but it just looked really bad. Then I tried like painting them on and that, that looked like shit. So uh, ultimately what I ended up doing is cutting them out. I was trying to avoid that because cutting through the stuff uh, is is difficult to do in a clean way and because these were windows they needed to look a certain way 
So once I decided to do that, I went back to my original plan, which is to use these little sticks of balsa wood that I was just going to wedge into the opening. So I recessed the, the original foam that was in there in the hole, covered it with the paper and the action figure packaging, and then I put the balsa wood over it, cut the pieces to size, and painted them to match the doors. I also glued the crossbars on so that they'd hold in place, and then the vertical pieces are pretty much just wedged straight into the foam there. So uh, it ended up working out pretty well, as you'll see later on. Aside from that, I got this piece is all black and I magnetized it. So uh, I just stuck a magnet in the back of the coffee creamer lid there with some insulation foam in there to, to get it flush with the surface here. And then I stuck the magnet to it and then put some glue down, put the magnet on. So I'll get that painted. These bits will turn yellow on the bottom here and then Barring the windows and the sign, this thing will be done. Oh, I saw I gotta do the lettering too, so there is also that. That's gonna be fun, I hope. Okay, so next up in the process is gonna be the Ghostbusters sign. Now we haven't talked about this part yet, but there is a Ghostbusters logo sign that hangs above the door to the firehouse. This was a tough thing to figure out how I was gonna create. There's a, a Diamond Select one that's part of the Diamond Select diorama that comes with an individual figure, but that figure was like $60 minimum and I wasn't about to pay that much for just one piece of a, a diorama. And then have a figure that I have no use for. So. Um, what I decided to do was look online and I found on Etsy, somebody was selling 3d printed cookie cutters. So I decided what I was going to do is find some clay that would work for this and just stamp the cookie cutter into the clay and then have that, you know, do that twice, have it on both sides, make the sign for it to mount to, and then paint it up. Uh, this was, I think $4 and the seller was nerdy cutters they had a bunch of cool designs so you know if, if you're into cookie cutters or if you want to try this project that's where i got it what i landed on for the clay was this creative paper clay i watched some youtube videos on what kind were the best this person went through and did a test of like five different kinds of air drying clay and this was the one that seemed to have all the properties that i was going to need the most so this is what i went with uh, i got this at michael's crafts i think you can get this at any art supply store most likely uh, so the plan is I'm going to roll it up, I'm going to roll it flat, make essentially, you know, a, a disc, you know, what, five by five, something like that, and then just stamp this into it. This says it takes one to three days to dry, depending on how big it is. Now, one concern is that this may be kind of heavy. I'm hoping it dries pretty lightweight. Okay, so here's the first test run, and the cookie cutter works great, actually, for this purpose. So I think this is going to work out just fine. The problem was that I forgot to uh, oil this up with any kind of like easy release stuff. I have this uh, quick release spray that I use for when I would like do resin casting. So I'm gonna spray that onto this and then that should uh, do what we need it to do. So that's, that's my bad, I completely forgot that. Also, I'm using wax paper here because the clay is probably gonna wanna stick to the rolling pin and that way it will um, it'll come up nice and easy.
Okay, so we're about to cross the finish line on this, uh, but the last thing we need to do is add some more weathering to the brick and whatnot. So I'm gonna be using some of this Deco Art acrylic paint. Uh, this is a raw sienna color. I chose this one because it's got a lighter color to it and we don't need a lot. We're gonna take just a little bit. So as you can see, not much at all. And we're gonna water it down quite a bit. We're gonna add some brown to that. Anything that lives outside is gonna have this sort of natural wear and tear to it. And it just makes your piece that much more believable. Like I, this looked cool, but it was, it was just too sterile. You know, like it needs, it needs some life to it that you can only get by kind of like mucking stuff up. You, know, you don't want to overdo it. Cause then, and I think that's a mistake a lot of people make is they, they kind of do too much. And then it just looks like really ham fisted. So, you know, just little bits here and there. And a really important place for it is gonna be coming off the lettering. And the, the trick to this kind of thing is making it look as natural as possible. You don't want it to look like a brush stroke, right? So adding water helps because when you water something down, you, you add a randomizing component to it. All right, and here we have the finished piece with the Ghostbusters set up on it. This was a pretty challenging one, but all in all, I think it really helps flesh out the scene for the team and, and gives them something cool to stand on. Eventually what I'd like to do is build a section off to the side here and maybe do like a photo of the street in New York or something as the backdrop and then have an Ecto-1 next to it. But that's something that I'm gonna have to build that will be a combination of like a kit bash and also building from scratch. So that one is gonna be further along down the line. I, I hope to get better at building some of these vehicles uh, before I attempt that one, because I think I'm gonna need it. <laughs> so, but yeah, let's punch in and take a, a closer look at the details. Little Justin's collection shout out for you guys if you watch his channel. <laughs> so here's the finished sign. Now, all in all, I'm more or less happy with how it turned out. The cool thing is that it I was able to attach it via magnet. Now, I actually have two magnets here. There was one that I embedded in the top and then another one that I had to put on top of it because once I added the sign to it, it needed to be strong enough to hold the weight of it. It's still pretty lightweight, but adding those extra magnets just made it so that it could support the weight. The clay didn't flatten out as much as I wanted it to. So you can see there's some gapping overall. It's not a big deal. So I'm happy with how that turned out. And that just attaches like that, which is pretty cool. Magnets, I'm telling you, for, for this kind of stuff, they can't be underestimated. And then I also capped the top of this with a piece of black foam board. The top was a little uneven and some of the pink was still exposed from the insulation foam. So I just decided like to put a nice even thing on the top to give it more of a finished look. I just wanna do a quick pan here so you can see it all closer up. Apologize, I'm not the greatest steady cam man. I love that slime or two cast in that translucent green like that. This is just a, a really great set as you can see. And you know, I won't get into reviewing them because there are plenty of reviews on YouTube that you can find to get an overview of them. But yeah, just a, a really excellent figure set. And I'm so happy to have something to, to put them on that I feel like is deserving of them. So that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks again for watching. Uh, if you enjoy this kind of content, hit subscribe. I'm doing stuff like this regularly. I'd love for you to come along with me as we build more dioramas, action figures, and vehicles. If you wanna see more photos of what I did today, as well as stuff that I've made on this channel, you can click the link below in the show notes for my Instagram page. I'll have a lot of it featured on there. At the beginning of this video, you'll see in a trailer for my graphic novel Count. It's my sci-fi reimagining of the Count of Monte Cristo. There's sword fights, swashbuckling, robots, cool vehicles. That's available at a link below as well. I've also got links in the show notes for the materials that I use in this video. So you can find them on your own if you wanna try a build like this or something similar. And until next time, keep your head on swivel.